Hi and welcome back. This lecture is going to be the first lecture in what will be the remainder of the course where we look at bivariate and multivariate analysis for hypothesis testing. So let's begin. We're going to talk about cross-tabulation right now. And cross-tabulation is just putting uh, a dependent variable in a table with an independent variable and looking at how the percentages fall. So we're going to talk about cross-tabulation, how we set it up, how we read cross-tabs. We're going to show how we might want to think about demonstrating covariation, and we're going to spend some time thinking about the role that measurement plays in setting up a good crosstab. All right, let's begin. This is a crosstab. This crosstab, estimating trust in government by whether the respondent participates in politics, we have an independent variable, the level of participation, and a dependent variable, how much trust someone has in government. The first step in describing a relationship between two variables is to arrange our data so that you can get sort of an initial inspection of whether there is a relationship or not. In univariate analysis, you created a vector or one dimension of the values for the one variable that you were interested in. In cross-tabulation, we establish an array or a two-dimensional display of how the values of the two variables interact with one another. Each observation will have a value on each variable, the independent and dependent variable. And the simultaneous occurrence of both values in such an array for any one observation will be located within a cell. A cross-tabulation is made up of rows, the values of the dependent variable, always, and the columns, or the values of the independent variable, always. An observation will have a location in a cell, the intersection of an independent and dependent value, determined by how that observation was evaluated and scored relative to both those independent and dependent variables. You can think of your independent variable as always occurring on the x-axis and your dependent variable as always occurring on the y-axis. When we sum a crosstab, we always sum down the columns. Columns should always sum to 100% and we're looking for the differences in the value of the dependent variable across the categories of the independent variable. So for example, in this table here, we have the three categories of participation level, none, some, and lot, a lot. And we're using that participation level to explain why people may have more or less trust in government. So you could see, for example, among those who don't participate, 12.9% have a lot of trust in government, and among those who do participate a lot, 20.5% have a lot of trust in government. So there seems to be some differences as we go across the categories of the independent variable in the values of the dependent variable. When we look at a relationship, a bivariate relationship, or even later in the course when we look at a multivariate relationship, we're looking for three things. We're looking for statistical significance, and that is, if the data are taken from a sample, can the relationship we observe in this sample be generalized to the population from which the sample was drawn? Second, we're going to look for degree or strength of the relationship. So ask yourself, when you examine the relationship, how effectively do values of the independent variable predict the values of the dependent variable? Finally, we're going to look for form. So we're going to look for the directionality of the relationship, or which values of the dependent variable are associated with which values of the independent variable. And form can be expressed as positive, for example, as values of the independent variable increase, values of the dependent variable are also increasing. Uh, relationships can be negative, as values of the independent variable increase, values of the dependent variable decrease. And they can be nonlinear relationships. But for the remainder of this course, we're only going to examine linear relationships and categorical relationships. So we won't look for relationships such as this last example, which is curvilinear. What's going to happen throughout the remainder of the course is we're going to examine various levels of measurement and the tests that we can perform on those levels of measurement relative to whether the independent and dependent variable are measured at the nominal ordinal interval ratio or dichotomous level of measurement. So you can see what's created here as we think about significance, degree, and form. There are 16 different boxes here. We're going to fill in most of these boxes throughout the remainder of the course. Some of the boxes we're going to omit because they're ideally suited for graduate level education, but these are the boxes that we're going to fill. So when we come back, we're going to start thinking about how we populate these boxes with the variety of statistical tests that will establish relationships, first in cross-tabulation, then with other techniques. So to recap, we covered what is a cross-tabulation, how we set up a cross-tab, how we read cross-tabulations, we talked about demonstrating covariation 
through the idea of statistical significance, degree, and form. And finally, we spent some time thinking about briefly the role that lev- the level of measurement plays in helping us understand covariation. Great job, students. Now that we have an understanding of cross-tabulation, what we're going to do is move into developing how we can do some bivariate hypothesis testing, first with cross-tabs, then with other techniques. We'll talk to you soon.